Alright, so we just got some news that has caused people to resume their hero slander as usual. And on top of that, if you didn't already know, Sega is buying Rovio, the people that made Angry Birds. You know, it's like, you know those TV shows, like they did that shit in Friends, like, you know, if I'm 40 and you're 40 and we're both single, then we'll end up together kind of thing. This is what this Sega Rovio collaboration feels like. <laughs> like Angry Birds and Sonic coming together in 2023. <laughs> So we'll get to all this right now, but I subscribe to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe, okay? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you still using boring regular browsers when Opera GX exists? Opera GX offers you endless customization. With GX mods, you can flip your entire browser 180 with just one click and change pretty much anything you want. You can turn your whole browser into an arcade. You can hear sound effects anytime you type. The possibilities are endless. Default browsers tend to hog your PC resources a lot. But with Opera GX, you can use the GX control panel to limit the CPU and RAM that you're willing to let the browser use to get optimal performance when you're trying to play your game. And I know what you're thinking, all of this sounds cool, but switching browsers is a pain in the ass, right? But Opera GX is equipped with an import tool that allows you to quickly import all of your settings from your previous browser to GX, like browsing history, bookmarks, and cookies. On top of that, Opera GX is also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. So make sure to check out Opera GX using the link in the description below for free and enhance your browsing experience. And thank you so much Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So, it's been taking over the internet recently, well not the internet, like Sonic, Twitter, you know. But, Sega is buying Rovio, the people that made Angry Birds. And, as a result, they're having a bit of a press conference where Sega and Rovio are basically talking about the acquisition and what it means for the future of Sega and Rovio and Sonic and Angry Birds, if people care about the future of Angry Birds, apparently, and apparently people still do. But there's a few things that were said in there that have led people to go on a rampage, okay? Basically, someone at Sega upper management during the conference said that Sonic Frontiers has moved 3.5 million units, which is 300,000 more since last updated. And I'll play the clip here. Sega introduced new Sonic title every year. But last year, we introduced Sonic Frontier. We released last year. It was a great hit, already you know hitting 3.5 million units. And now everyone has run with this clip and has gone, yep, it's beating the goat. Da -da 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 -da. Sonic Frontiers is cleared 3.5 million units worldwide. Sega Transmedia President Shuji Utsumi claimed in the joint press conference last Tuesday, if officialized, the Open Zone game will surpass the GOAT to become the best-selling 3D title in franchise history. Now I know what you're thinking. Pram, you're just salty because Frontiers outsold heroes. Well, the answer to that is, yes, I am salty, but <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm joking, okay? I'm not salty because the reason why I'm not salty is because Heroes is never really the highest-selling 3D Sonic game, okay? It wasn't, okay? Like, okay, it would be nice for my favorite Sonic game to be the highest-selling one, yes, but when you look at the statistics, I find it hard to believe that Heroes is the highest selling 3D Sonic game before anyway. I mean, Sega's never really come out and said, here are the sales for every single 3D Sonic game worldwide, total, and this is the ranking, right? They kind of give you sales figures at one point for one console in one region somewhere, and they just kind of leave it at that. Especially when they're ashamed of the sales figures, right? Because like Frontiers, they're shouting from the moon, right? After cleaning up Eggman's piss, but nonetheless, they're shouting from the moon. But try and find the forces and Mania sales figures Sega will not shine from anywhere, okay? Mania didn't sell that well, even though it was well received. And Forces was Forces. That definitely didn't sell well. And its highest quote unquote selling month was when it was on PS Plus for a month and people were downloading it for free. And that was 700,000 units. Like, certain games you get the data, other games you don't get the data. And even then, most of it doesn't come straight from Sega. They're trying to find it from different sources and whatnot. I'll give you an example, right? If you go to Wikipedia right now, there's a page that says list of best selling GameCube video games. And they've got a ton of sources for this. It's like 30 plus sources for this list and heroes isn't on the list they've got 35 games here so according to this list this is the top 35 highest selling gamecube games sonic mega collection is at 22 with 1.37 million and sonic adventure 2 battle is at 14 with 1.73 million but no mention of heroes right so if that list is true then sonic heroes on the gamecube at least lost to sonic adventure 2 which was a re-release now granted sa2 came out at the end of the dreamcast life cycle which means that a lot of people wouldn't have gotten it on dreamcast and they would have got 
button on GameCube, but still, if you type in Sonic Heroes GameCube on VG charts on an entirely different website, they say Heroes moved 1.42 million on the GameCube, which would put it above Mega Collection GameCube, but below SA2 Battle on the GameCube. For Heroes to lose to the re-release of SA2, that doesn't sound like a game that's the highest selling of all time. If you look at the highest selling Xbox games of all time, original Xbox obviously, not like the other ones, there's only 22 games on this list, with the lowest game on the list being Need for Speed Underground at 1.1 million. The other site, VG Charts, is claiming that Sonic Heroes Xbox moved 0.9 million units, which would mean that at least both of these sources are accurate here, because if it moves 0.9 million, it wouldn't show up on the highest selling list if the lowest thing there is 1.1 million. We look at PS2, there's two Sonic games on this list. Sonic Heroes moved 1.72 million at 88th place on PS2 highest selling, but then it lost to Mega Collection Plus, which moved 1.74. Hold on, wait, Sonic outsold Call of Duty? Oh, the early 2000s, man. <laughs> oh, the platform was on the decline, but man, we still have some power. <laughs> anyway, Mega Collection outsold Heroes. Now, again, that's not a 3D Sonic game, so that doesn't count, but it's just kind of interesting that Heroes, which sold best on PS2 out of all the platforms, couldn't even beat Mega Collection. People ride for their precious classics, eh? But of course, VG Charts is claiming that Sonic Heroes PS2 moved 3.16 million units. So where did that come from, eh? Who's correct? Who's telling the truth? I mean, it's not impossible, right, that Sonic would move those kind of units on the PS2. I mean, there was no SA1 or SA2 re-release on PS2. So all the Sonic fans who didn't have those systems and they got a PS2 because they wanted to play GTA and other cool shit that the PlayStation 2 had, right? They're going to be like, well, this is the only Sonic we got on here aside from the 2D one. So I guess we have to cop, right? I don't know. But if you didn't realize, we've forgotten something, right? Because <laughs> if we look at the Dreamcast, it's pretty much common knowledge. Like, this is a big stat, so you can't really fuck up a stat like this. This, right it is pretty much common knowledge that the highest selling game on the sega dreamcast was sonic adventure with 2.5 million units sold remember that's 2.5 million sales on a console that didn't even move 10 million sales just for the record so now let's look at the math again frontiers has supposedly moved 3.5 million units total sonic adventure moved 2.5 on just the dreamcast so you're probably thinking oh wait hold on a minute if it moved 2.5 on the dreamcast and adventure isn't like heroes in that it actually got re-released then they didn't abandon it Avenger came to the GameCube. So where's the GameCube sales there? Okay, uh, well, it's not showing up on the highest selling GameCube game, so that, that that seems off. You can't tell me that SADX on the GameCube didn't sell, right? Plenty of people played SADX, right? According to VG charts, Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube alone moved 1.6 million units, not including the PC version or the re-release of SADX in the 2010s. It's saying on GameCube it moved 1.6 million, but yet it's not showing up on the highest selling GameCube game list on Wikipedia. But if that number was true, then you add the 1.6 million of the SADX on GameCube to the 2.5 million of Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast, the highest selling game on Dreamcast, that's already 4.1 million, right? Not even mentioning when SADX got ported to 360 and PS3 and PC again, because they had the original SADX on PC, then you had the Steam version. So that means SA1 has been on Dreamcast, GameCube, 360, PS3, PC in the early 2000s, and then Steam in the early 2010s. And just two of those things as up to 4.1 million apparently i struggle to figure out when heroes was ever the highest selling three so i don't know and that's kind of the thing with this sales figure debate i'm not even trying to say that everything i'm saying is perfectly accurate because there's so many contradictory numbers when it comes to sales figures because sega never comes out and just lists everything they list some games and then other games are just kind of mums the word especially the ones that sell poorly they don't want to say shit right or they might announce at some point maybe six months after the game came out this how much it sold on this console and then you don't hear about it for years and it's like how much is it sold since then we don't know we have to track steam spy or vg charts or whatever sources wikipedia are quoting but if you look at the press conference or all these times when they've been announcing frontier sales like we've moved 2.5 million we moved 3 million we moved 3.5 they've never once actually said it's outsold this game or it's now the highest selling 3d sonic game they haven't actually said that everyone else is adding that part to it i mean don't you think if frontiers was actually the highest selling 3d sonic game now they'll be the first to say we have now got the highest selling 3d sonic game ever they would be saying it from the moon they're just saying Frontiers moved 3.5 million. In fact, Tales Channel even had to quote themselves and re clarify and say that they reached out to Sega Sammy Holdings and they said the sales figure remains to be over 3.2 million as of the end of March 2023 from late April, not the 3.5 million figure said by Utsumi on 2nd May. So they even contradicted themselves now saying it's just over 3.2, not 3.5. But even 
even at 3.5. Sega have never once said this is now the highest selling 3D Sonic game. They never even mentioned that. So I don't know why everyone is so quick to say this, that, and the third. And again, this is not me trying to defend Heroes because I don't think Heroes is the highest. All these sources and these numbers are all over the place, clearly. Look at this. It's probably Adventure 1 or Adventure 2. I find it hard to believe that a game that isn't currently available could still be up there in sales. And you know, unless it's the, you know, the Olympic games, because like the Mario and Sonic Olympic games have moved like seven plus million units. Like that's Mario and Sonic. That's going to do big numbers, obviously. But in terms of 3D Sonic games, you can't buy heroes. I can buy Sonic Adventure on Steam right now, and it's currently sitting at $2.99. Sonic Adventure 2 sitting at £3.49. I mean, the fact that Izuka himself, when he was promoting Frontiers, was like, we want this game to be just as impactful as Sonic Adventure. The way the data is pointing from what I've been looking at, I still think Sonic Adventure is the highest selling 3D Sonic game. So that's the metric you should be looking at is Sonic Adventure 1. Nonetheless, I don't really like to get too fussed about these sales figures because again, like the highest selling Sonic game of all time is still Sonic 1. So sales figures is not really a big deal to me because I am not the company, right? Obviously they should sell if your games are not selling there's a problem, but trying to use sales figures to deduce which game is the best is like trying to use sales figures to deduce which artist is the best, right? At the end of the day, people are going to like what they're going to like. I'm glad that Sega's finally making some real sales of Frontiers, to be honest, even if it outsells games that I like more. Because if this game is selling well, then it means that they're going to be like, oh, maybe we should put more budget into our games instead of rehashing Chronos Island three times and copying all of the cyberspace levels, or at least most of the cyberspace levels from better games. Whether they actually go through that and raise the budget, I don't know. I mean, they kind of said they were going to last year after the sales start to come in, but only time will tell, man. But yeah, there's one more thing we need to talk about regarding that press conference. One of the women in the press conference was basically asking like if Rovio are going to be developing some shit for our Lord and Savior, right? And they were kind of mums the word about it, but I'll play the clip here. On the Rovio side, we have spent the last 20 years developing and operating mobile games. We're excited at the idea of helping Sega expand their IPs and reach an even more, even, even more people in the global mobile gaming market. I, I know you can't uh, talk so detailed about the future, but obviously there is an option that Rovio could develop Sega Sonic mobile games. Yeah, yeah, of course we can't talk about the future <laughs> titles. But yeah, it was basically like, yeah, I wouldn't rule out us developing some, I don't know, mobile Sonic games in the future, you know? Like, it's not really something that's probably fully planned out yet. Maybe they talked about it in the offices, but there's nothing really coming out. I know there were heavy rumors about a Frontiers mobile game coming. I don't know if Rory has anything to do with that or some other team working on that, but we need to hear about that fast because I want to play Frontiers mobile. I want to see how that looks. It probably look better than a Switch version of Frontiers, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, look, if Rovio wants to develop Sonic mobile games, go ahead, okay? Just don't be touching the main series unless you know what you're doing. I mean, to be fair, I mean, Angry Birds physics are pretty fire, though. Like, may maybe they could teach Kishimoto a few things, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. Sonic Frontiers has moved well over 3.2 million units. Some people are saying that makes it the highest set in 3D Sonic game. I'm not fully convinced yet. And I mean, Sega themselves haven't even said that part yet. So I guess we'll find out later. And Rovio could be working on some Sonic shit. Would you like to see them take a crack at some mobile Sonic games? And of course, a big shout out to all my channel members. If you want to become a channel member, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button. Be make sure to like, home, subscribe, hit that bell. Make sure to check out the non sonic channel, the link will be in the description. But that's all I have to say right now, so, do me out!